Do not buy a juice bar unless you understand these key things, which I'm going to get into in a moment. I have a lot of people reach out to me. Andrew, I'm thinking about buying this juice business. Is it a good deal? Does it make sense? Should I do it? I'm going to talk about all the things that you need to understand before you buy a juice business, why it's good, and why you might want to avoid it. But before I dive in, if you guys don't know who I am and you're new to the channel, my name is Andrew McFarlane. I've been in this industry for over 13 years, run my own juice bar concepts, as well as with our company, helped hundreds of people launch and scale successful juice bars, acai bowl businesses, smoothie bars, healthy cafes, and the like. So all the information on this channel is coming from this experience. Now let's dive into this topic of conversation. Okay, you are thinking about, do I start a juice bar on my own? Do I buy this business over here that's for sale? What's a better situation? What should I do? Well, first, I'm gonna start by talking about what are the things you want to avoid and make sure that you do not do, okay? Number one, do not buy this business simply because it's cheaper than starting on your own and therefore makes financial sense. That's not always the case. You need to understand why is this person selling this business? Because you could just be inheriting the financial burden that this person is trying to offload onto someone else. You don't want to do that. The other thing too is you have to know, is this location a good location, right? Buying a business doesn't make the location better. If it's a bad location before, it's going to stay a bad location, most likely unless the neighborhood is changing rapidly, in which case then you would take that into account. So understanding why this person is selling this business and what are you going to do if the business's sales do need to be improved because that's not always the case. Sometimes you're happy to keep the sales where they are if it's a highly profitable business, but if the sales do need to be improved, how are you going to improve them? Or how are you going to optimize the business? You have to have a clear strategy around that. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later on in the video in terms of evaluating the criteria for a business and which scenarios are good, difficult, so forth. Um, but that's something to understand on the, on the kind of front end of why you wouldn't want to buy a business. What are some of the benefits? Why it doesn't make sense to potentially buy a juice bar as opposed to starting one from scratch? Well, the first thing is time. It's gonna save you a lot of time to buy a business as opposed to building one out and starting from A to Z. How long does it take if you're starting on your own? On average, could be six months, could be eight months. There are rare scenarios where you can do it a little bit less than six months, maybe five months, but that's really rare. But assume about six to eight months from the inception of starting if you're fully funded, okay? That's one aspect. What's the second aspect is you could save yourself money. This doesn't mean that you will indefinitely, but you could save yourself money on the construction fees, right? On inventory, on a lot of the processes and training of staff that it would take to start a new company from scratch. That's a little bit of a paradox because if the business is not doing well, this probably also implies that potentially their staff might not be well-trained. The person who ran the business before doesn't know how to operate the company, and therefore you could be inheriting a lot of bad habits, bad processes that you need to overcome. So don't just assume that that's a benefit because it could be a downside, but it takes a specific evaluation for each company to know that. Now, the other thing that a lot of times people don't think about, which is connected to the cost portion of this, is that when people are selling businesses, a lot of times you can negotiate deals for seller financing. So you can avoid going through banks. You can also avoid putting a lot of money up front depending on how important it is that this person is selling this business. There's a lot of scenarios where business owners might get distressed, just like with the real estate or other properties, where someone says, you know what? I had a death in my family. I had some health emergency. I can't run this business anymore. I need to get this business off my hands and I'm willing to do it at a very good rate and in a creative way. And so you might walk into that situation where the business might be listed at, let's say 100,000, 150,000, and you might tell that seller, hey, you know what? I can put 20% down, I can put 30% down. Are you willing to carry a note for the next two years, three years, four years to have me pay off the rest of this loan at 0% interest? And there are situations where people are willing to do that just to get the sale done because business sales are complicated. They're generally much more complicated in my experience than buying a home or anything else because there's many more things to evaluate and consider, okay? So that's the first thing and I wanna understand here, I told you kind of the cons, the downsides, what you wanna be looking out for, some of the benefits. And now let's talk about the things that I look for if I was you know, talking to a client and these are things that we can obviously help you evaluate, reach out to me at andrew at starterjuicebar.com, but what do you really wanna look for, okay? As I alluded to earlier and mentioned, 
is you want to be able to understand what are the problems with this business, how severe are the problems with this business, and how am I going to improve the problems with this business? I'll talk about this. What are some of the biggest problems I see most often with companies if they're for sale and they need to be revamped? One, branding. A lot of these companies will usually have really, really poor branding and design. That means that their websites have to get redone, their logos, their interior design, all the design, okay? That's number one. Number two is poor management. And how does that reflect itself in the business? It could be a lot of ways, could be high turnover and other things, but the two main areas that you'll see are things like food costs and labor costs. When I see a business that has bad food costs, I actually get excited, that's good, because these are things that are easy to resolve. That's a whole other topic of conversation I won't get into in this video, how to do that. But if I see a business that has high food costs, then I think this is a good and easy problem to solve. If I see a business that has high labor, I also think, okay, this is a problem that's solvable, but it's a bit more difficult. It takes a longer process because these things could be cultural in the business in terms of how do you save on labor. It could require a lot more attention and time. But if I see a business that has the opportunity to make a lot more money when these issues are resolved, then I'm excited. The other thing too that I ask myself when I'm looking at a business is how much money are they spending on marketing? How marketing savvy are these business owners? Most of the time, if their business isn't going crazy and doing really, really well, they're probably not great in marketing. Very, very few business owners are. And if they have opportunities there, that's another thing I think about in terms of ways to generate more revenue in that business and accentuate the value of that sale. So overall, I would say in the right scenario, this can be a great, 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 great thing. But I want to also have you guys proceed with caution Make sure you do not just get into this because of the excitement of how cheaply you can get into the endeavor because long-term, like I said, it could end up being more of a financial burden than it's worth. It's very, very important that you evaluate these things meticulously and intelligently to make sure it is the right decision for you. If you need help with that or anything else, when it comes to starting your juice business, reach out to me personally at andrew at starjuicebar.com. That's the video for today. Follow us on Instagram. If you're not following us on Instagram, you're missing out on a lot. We have exclusive content and giveaways and all kinds of things on Instagram, recipe videos, stuff that we don't release on YouTube. Follow us there at Starter Juice Bar. And lastly, we have a podcast. It's called the Juice Bar Experts Podcast. It's on Spotify. It's on iTunes. Find us there. That's all. Sending you guys my love. I'll see you at the next video. Hope you guys have been enjoying the video content. If you're inspired to learn even more about how to start your juice business from scratch, for you, we have a free ebook. It's called The 15 Steps to Starting Your Juice Business. And this is going to go through a high-level overview, through a step-by-step -step process on how you get your business off the ground. Everything from you know branding, menu development, finding the right location, and more. This is going to be a clear roadmap so you know how to go from where you are all the way to opening your store. If you want to go even deeper, we've also created an online course. It's called The Juice bar master blueprint. This is going to go into great depth on everything from how do you put together and think about recipe development? How do you cost out your menu? And what's the math around it? What equipment do you need? How do you design your store? How do you find the right location? And so much more. I know you're going to find a lot of value out of both of these. There's links in the description below. So I hope to see you guys at the next video and enjoy.